Hi, I'm Robert. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to Whiskey Brothers, the channel where we share with you the whiskies we're drinking right now. And right now, we're drinking an Aberlour, a wee ten-year-old. But we're not here today to talk about that. We're here to have a wee look at Kev's whiskey collection. Not, it's not, it's not too fanciful, but I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a work in progress. So uh -huh. I'm just, I'm trying to drain it down so I can start again. <laughs> I like the idea. The Glenlivet Nerdura, oh, aged 16 years, first filled American oak. Um, you will remember us tasting this at the whiskey festival. Aye, aye. So this, the Nerdura, mm -hmm. has been a favourite of yours yes, for yeah. about. Oh. As long as you've been drinking whiskey, really. Aye, yeah, no, yeah. A good, a good twelve, fifteen years at least. It's been in, it's been in that, in that zone for I can, I can, I can safely say I have never owned a bottle of Nadura, but I've helped myself <laughs> <laughs> to use Aye. on a number of occasions. Aye. we were at a whiskey event last year. You didn't yeah. mention. Um, this really was a highlight of that. It was one of the best three or four yeah. whiskies we tasted that yeah. day. I mean. The, 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 the point today really is just to see what Kev's got in his cupboard. Um, if there are any whiskies that we speak about today that you would like us to talk about in more detail, we're happy to do that. Just let us know in the comments below. Try and get Rab to buy a Nadura. Eh? Yeah, but uh, this is a, the Glenlivet Nadura. It's a non-chill filtered version of the Glenlivet bottled at uh, 48%. Mm. So, you know, a really nice whiskey. Mm. Mm. We've always got one of these <laughs> in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Scottish Malt Whiskey Society, um, Coffee, Kisses and Cappuccino, mm. one of only 207 bottles, um, it was a 10 year old, 59.3 first fill barrel X bourbon. Wow. This is a wee beauty. So this is a 35 48. Yeah, but... Do you know? No. Do you not? No. Well, I can find out in minutes, like. We should check it out, actually. Let's do that while we're on Yeah. Here. Tell um, us why you think it's nice. Now look up what it is. Um, I, I remember this. Um, compelled to buy it when we were at the Malt Whiskey Society. So this is a Glen Mori. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the 48th single barrel mm -hmm. of Glen Mori that the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society has had. Mm-hmm. Um, the Glen Morries, a little bit like the Kalilas and the Glen Farclises, are often consistently good. Mm. So mm -hmm. you think this might be tasty as well, yeah? Oh, it is. Yeah, mm. I mean, it, it, I remember we, we were quite impressed with it. Oh, yeah. 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 We should be drinking that rather than the other lower. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. yeah Glen Morrie, Coffee Kisses and Cappuccino. Uh, one of 207 bottles from yeah. the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. Yeah. Um, there's at least a good half bottle of this left. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, very close to the front was the one we were... Oh, now, now. The Cairn Moor Highland yeah. Tobermory 7-year-old Strictly Limited bottling, which we have reviewed. Yeah. Um, if you want to check out the review, it'll be either there or there. I can't recall which side it is. Uh, and we'll put a link to that review yeah. Uh, this was awesome. This one is got a nip left in it. <laughs> well, that's not even a nip. That guy. Can we just show everyone what, what you call the nip there? That's not a nip. It is Look a nip. It. That is just like. There's one in there. There's one in there. <laughs> there's one in there. Um, Lafroy uh, PX cask. Mm -hmm. um, Pedro Jimenez sherry finish. Um, I, you know, I was astounded by this. Um, so much so that it was on my hit list when I got uh, to the airport mm -hmm. on a on a journey. Had to have it. No, what? So oh. the big revelation for me: we we went to Isla, we went to the whiskey festival, we went to mm. Lefroy. Mm. Can we say on record that Lefroy were one of the most generous? distilleries mm. that we visited on that trip and mm. um, when we arrived yeah. they basically put a bottle of whiskey on the table and just let us drink it um, and it was the quarter mm. cask mm. which is a, a beautiful whiskey mm -hmm. um, but this is even nicer isn't it absolutely yeah yes uh, absolutely bottled at 48 percent um, doesn't say in the label, but it's unlikely that this is 
chill filter. It's unlikely it's got anything yeah. added to it. Yeah. Um, a really great example of Laphroaig. Yes. And, a, and an example, I think, as well, of them moving their flavour mm. into sort of um, new, perhaps more, well, more palatable mm. sort of versions of Laphroaig for wider markets. Well, I mean, I, I think I mean, everybody has to be aware that um, it doesn't matter overly what they do, there will be a very strong Laphroaig background yes yeah. but the sherry finish on it <clears throat> triple matured absolutely exquisite oh does that look like it? a wee um what's that wee dubby bottle in there <laughs> pull that sucker out yeah what's that we need a balloa a balloa we like a <laughs> balloa we're drinking a balloa kevin ah, but this we're, is, not, uh, we're not drinking that this is the abuna uh -huh. um it's a oloroso sherry but finished mm. um very 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 powerful 60.7 um you know it's non-chill filtered it is now it's exquisite you, you will um correct me if i'm wrong on this uh, one one of the very 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 first cash strength whiskies mm -hmm. that we purchased outside the remit of the scotch malt whiskey society mm -hmm. would be um the pc7 the port yeah. charlotte yeah mm -hmm. um which is from um, the Buda Habit? Bu uh, no, oh, Buda um, Brew Gladdy. Brew Gladdy. Uh, but thank Brew you for Gladdy. that. We've had a few whiskies before. Bees, the bees. One yeah. of the bees. Yeah. Um, this was one of the second or thirds. Yeah. Um, and this this Aberlour mm -hmm. is fantastic. It is. Yeah. And, um, and it, it can be, you can actually get a hold of it at a really good price. Yeah. Because one of the reasons that, that um, again, one of my forays up and down the high street um, in Edinburgh, um, plenty of whiskey shops, sitting out, having me look around, and I spotted this, and um, not this particular bottle, mm -hmm. um, uh, probably two before that. Yeah, <laughs> but it was the waxed, I remember yeah. you bringing it back because that was really unusual. Yeah, and it was, it's bottled this one at 60.7%. I think yeah. the one you had was 61 or 62%. Yeah. It was an incredibly strong drink, yeah, um, and a great version of Abelour. Particularly yeah. at a point, we might cover this in a future review. Mm. Aberlour is a very inconsistent dram. Um, it has been awesome, mm. um, but off late over the last five to seven years, it's been iffy at times, iffy at times, iffy at times. And, and fine, but never great. But the Abunas have always been very good. I thought you were for that. Yeah. Those. Yeah. You know. So I mean, like mm. you know. I, I, the ten year old Aberlour, mm, sometimes, but the Abunas have always been excellent. This one, uh, mm. um, <laughs> the Glen Factors 105 cast strength, mm. sixty percent volume. Um, our good friend John picked this up from me on his way back from Holland. Now, can you tell everyone, right, how much you paid? For that Glen Farkless 105. I think it was £20. £20, pounds, right? I know. From the ferry on aye, the way back. Aye. From Cop You've been in Copenhagen. It was a Copenhagen. You've been in Copenhagen and yeah. he came back via Amsterdam on the ferry. Yeah. And he bought this for you for 20 quid. Um, I missed out because <laughs> I didn't check my phone until the following day. <laughs> so I'm the sucker. Yeah. But can we say Glen Farkless? Yeah. A fabulous whiskey. Aye. Ah. Um, Love them. Highly shared. Yes. Really, yes. you know, a gentleman's whiskey, a, yeah. a cigar smoking club type whiskey. Yeah. Um, but brilliant uh -huh. stuff. Uh -huh. And at its best, perhaps singularly the best version mm. of scotch in that sort of sweet shared space. I would agree. Yeah. The, 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 the Glen Farkless, the tradition, the quality, the consistency. Yeah. Um, Family owned. Yeah. I mean, the thing is that um, we say consistency. Consistency is there in terms of the quality of the product you get every time. You do get a little bit of variation mm -hmm. on the on their outturns, yeah. or on their on their bottlings and their releases, and um, but it, it's never enough to actually, you know, you wouldn't say, well, that's not a Glen Farkless. It makes it interesting. Absolutely, it's always a Glen Farkless. You know, a Dalwini. Uh -huh. um, this is a distiller's edition. Right. Uh, Bottled double up. matured, 43%. Nice. Um, looking forward to cracking this. Is it an airport purchase or no, this was a, a shop purchase? This was a Christmas present. Right. You know, which was really nice. And I think I think it's probably, yeah, it's due to yeah. be cracked. 
Darwin is nice. Darwin is nice. Um, uh, chances are then you'll see a, a review of this in not too distant future. Yeah. Glen Devron. Um, present. Hi. Always nice. Like presents. People who know me know I like to explore a little bit. Um, <laughs> Haven't been on to this. People who know this. me buy me bells. But we'll get into that in another review. <laughs> Kevin. People who know Kevin buy him Glendevron. Glendevron. Fabulous stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 20 year old, 43, proof so. Um, and I can't say much about this because I, I haven't drank. Have you ha ever had Glendevron no, before? No, might mean I No, so. So where's it, where is it from? It's um, Banff. Right? Yeah, the borough of Banff. Um, I, I'm, you know, I really am looking forward to trying this. Do know? we know, is it used as a component of a blend or? I'm going to have to do a bit no, more that's research. Fine. Well, when, that, you know? No doubt, again, here's one that we will review. And when we do, we'll have done a little yeah. bit of research on the internet and we'll know a bit, a bit more about what it's used for. Oh, yeah, okay. it is the legendary. <sighs> The Glen Gush! Drum Gush! <laughs> <laughs> so, the drum, the drum Gush, right? <laughs> There's a long story associated with this bottle, yeah. um, which we, I think we'll cover in another vlog, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, this isn't the story, no. but this was the accompaniment mm -hmm. to the story. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing about this whiskey is how uninteresting it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a single Highland malt Scotch whiskey. Yeah, I wish I had that much left. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I've got less than that means I'll drink it. It wasn't that tasty. But uh, alongside that bottle, um, which we'll cover in another story, mm. was two bottles of whiskey that Kevin and I got. I which we discovered during our ownership of them were, and here is an example, were worth a lot of money. Now, the story will wait for another video, but this bottle of whiskey that I hold in my hand is the best part of two grand. And the one I have is empty. Mm. Um, so you're, you're looking at about 100 quid a nip and we'll tell you more sometime soon. I picked this up just last week because um, I do like to keep Oh yeah, fabulous little, stuff. Uh, really enjoying Tasker Storm at the moment. Yeah, it's really nice. Really enjoying it. It's become the go-to whiskey in the cupboard uh, for a Better Call Saul and Walking Dead night. Yeah, so, Tasker Storm. Yeah. Kalila. Kalila. And uh, Douglas Botland. Yeah. Um, a five-year-old. Aye. Kalila. Yeah. Um, and the colour of that, yeah? Yeah, like a Pinot Grigio. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's... And you've had one fat nip out of it, that's all. Yeah. So you don't know this whiskey yet? I don't. I haven't got down to the, down uh, to the understanding, but at um, bottled refilled at Hogshead. 46%. Yeah. Um, 417 bottles. Uh, we are fans of Kalula. Mm. We've hardly had mm -hmm. a poor drinking experience with Kalula. Yeah, I love and it. And often it's been dream-like. Mm -hmm. yeah, so really we, need, we need to come back and taste this one. We need to, we need to yeah. enjoy that one. So when did you come across that? Was that a gift? Or? It was a gift. <laughs> yeah. um, um, you always get nice gifts, so the gifts seem to yeah. last a bit longer than the stuff, the shop bought yeah. stuff. I, I, I All I can say is, like, when I we go get through my shop bought stuff. When we get round to my cupboard, you realise I've not got as many friends as Kevin. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and that. Oh, is this the drips? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, um, when we look at my whiskey, you will find a few bottles in the cupboard that are called Rab's Special Brews. Um, I think there may be three of them, Rab's mm. Special Brews 1, 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. um, and these are my approach to blending uh, on an annual basis the whiskies that I enjoy each year. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin set himself the challenge of actually doing a lifetime's blend <laughs> um, and he discovered that when a bottle of whiskey is empty, we don't have an empty one here, 
But if you imagine this bottle of whiskey was empty, if you actually put it on its side and leave it for 24 hours, um, the signs of like whiskey mm -hmm. and spirit and mm -hmm. glass means that like all the, the condensation and yeah. Just all the all the all the vapors, all the oils, and all the vapors just settle yeah. there. And what I actually do is, is you get the drips. Um, what I'm proving really in this process yeah. is that you think the bottle's finished, but it's not. But it's not. Well, actually, the bottle is finished. <laughs> um, this is taking you how long to um, film? That took about um, six months. Six months. And how many bottles of whiskey? Oh, I don't know. Aye, ah, far too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Yeah, lovely. Is that us? That's it. Um, right, it's pretty good. I do have a bottle of cooking whiskey because um, I am a, a dab hand in the kitchen and you should never be without a bottle of cooking whiskey. Indeed. Uh, I have no idea what you stick that on. Um, Chips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you need vinegar, you get that. Lots of salt, job done. Kevin, thanks for sharing your whiskey with us, buddy. Welcome. Yeah. I'll so, do mine's next. Yeah. Cheers. So, Thanks, everyone. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>